At St. Mary Mercy Hospital, nurses are able to draw blood for labs from a peripheral IV. A good IV will usually give adequate blood return, and this blood return makes it possible to draw labs from the IV. However, there are times when blood return may not come as easily as others. There are some tips and tricks that can aid the nurse in obtaining a blood sample when this occurs. This video will outline the process of drawing blood from a peripheral IV, as well as the troubleshooting tips that should be used before moving on to another method to obtain a blood sample. Before attempting to draw blood, you will need to gather the proper supplies. You will need a saline flush, a vacutainer adapter, a tourniquet, empty syringes. These could be 3cc, 5cc, or 10cc, and the reasoning for choosing different sizes will be discussed later in this video. Have a blue pad in place under the patient's arm. You will also need a new swab cap for when you are finished, and of course, the tubes for the samples that were ordered. To begin, remove the swab cap. If a swab cap is not present, clean the hub with alcohol for 30 seconds. Next, attach the saline flush and flush the line. Now, apply the tourniquet to the patient. Make sure it is a decent distance above the IV. If it is too close to the site, it can obstruct blood flow as you try to draw blood from the IV. Never apply the tourniquet prior to flushing the IV line. This could cause the vein to give out as you force fluid into the obstructed vein. Only apply the tourniquet after the flush is complete, but before you draw blood from the catheter. With the tourniquet in place, pull back on the syringe. If you get blood return easily, you should have no problem obtaining blood samples from this line. But first, waste at least 3 cc's of blood from the IV. If something was actively infusing through the IV, use your nursing judgment to decide if that infusion may impact the results of this lab draw. If you think that it will have an impact, you may need to flush a larger volume of saline and waste more blood before obtaining your sample. If your labs result with an uncharacteristically abnormal finding, it could be because the line needed more of a flush or more wasted blood. Make adjustments to your method and obtain a new sample. You also have the option of drawing the lab using a butterfly needle from the opposite arm, and this would eliminate any contamination from an infusion. If you have any questions regarding these decisions, contact the Vascular Access Team at extension 5672 or 2784. With your waste drawn, set it aside and connect the empty syringe. Draw back on the syringe. If there was no issue drawing the waste with your flush syringe, you should easily get the blood you need here. When your sample is drawn, flush the line with saline, clamp the line, and apply a new swab cap to the IV. Take the vacutainer adapter and screw it onto the syringe that holds your blood sample. As a side note, it's a good idea to always set your waste blood in a different place than your sample blood, so you don't confuse the two syringes. With the vacutainer adapter in place, hold the syringe up with the plunger facing the sky. Push the lab tube into the adapter and allow it to fill to the required amount. Time, date, and write your first initial and last name on the tube label and send it down to lab. For many patients, this will be a very simple process. Other times you may have trouble drawing blood off of the IV. Don't give up yet. There are some simple tips and tricks that can help you get this blood without having to resort to a different method. Sometimes, even though the IV flushed beautifully, you pull back to get blood return and nothing happens. Don't give up yet. You may still be able to get the blood you need. Other times, you may get blood return, but it's bubbling and frothing. If there is bubbling, this blood will hemolyze and that sample will be worthless. Again, don't give up yet. You may be able to manipulate the IV to get you a good sample. There are a few issues that can impact the ability to draw blood from an IV, and there are some strategies that you can use to eliminate these issues. The first thing to consider is your tourniquet. Is it tight enough to restrict blood flow? The tourniquet's role is to restrict flow of blood back to the heart. This causes the vein to become engorged with blood, which enlarges the vein and provides more blood around the catheter, and that makes it easier to draw. If your tourniquet is tight enough to do this, you should be able to feel and see the vein more prominently when your tourniquet is applied. Tourniquets need to be tight. They will probably be uncomfortably tight, and that is expected. Remember, the tourniquet should never be on for more than one minute at a time. Another tip to accomplish this vein engorgement is to position the arm lower than the heart to use gravity to impede the flow of blood. The next thing to consider is the position of the catheter. Sometimes the tip of the catheter is resting on the wall of the vein or up against a valve. And when you pull back on the plunger, the blood flow is impeded by this tissue. But by applying slight pressure to the hub and pulling it back a few millimeters, you can release the tip from this position and you will be able to draw blood. 
The third issue could be that you may be applying too much negative pressure to the vessel when trying to remove blood. When you have a syringe attached to the catheter and you pull back to remove blood, you are creating negative pressure. The more space you create in the syringe, the more negative pressure you are applying on the vessel. Too much negative pressure will force the vessel to collapse around the catheter and stop the flow of blood into the syringe. Larger syringes apply more negative pressure, and you have less control over the amount of pressure you apply. We'll use these different sized syringes as examples. If we look at the markings on these syringes, you can see the difference in the negative pressure we are going to create. With a 30 cc syringe, pulling to the first marking will create one milliliter of space in the syringe, or we can say we apply one milliliters worth of negative pressure. The first marking on the 10 cc syringe is one fifth of a milliliter, so we apply only one fifth of a milliliters worth of negative pressure, significantly less than the 30 cc syringe. But these could still be creating too much pressure for the vessel and cause it to collapse. If we look at the 3 cc syringe, we see we are only creating one tenth of a milliliter of negative pressure, half the pressure of a 10 cc syringe. When you use a smaller syringe, you are able to create negative pressure in smaller increments, which gives you more control over the pressure being created and makes it less likely that the vessel will collapse as that negative pressure is applied. So if you don't get blood return with a 10 cc or flush syringe, try a 3 cc syringe before you decide the IV won't give blood. Drawing blood from an IV is an option for most labs at St. Mary Mercy Hospital. It is quick, painless, and minimally invasive for the patient. Even though some IVs may not seem to give blood return on first attempt, make sure to try these troubleshooting techniques before you give up on this method completely. If you ever question if this is appropriate for a particular lab, call the Vascular Access Team for guidance.